Well, welcome back. We've been talking about all the fun events going on this weekend involving our loved ones, our pets. And when they're not feeling so well, our next guest says it's really comforting to know that there are people here on the First Coast that have specialized care available. Yeah, and Dr. Brad McKenzie is a board certified specialist at Affiliated Veterinary Specialists. And we uh, appreciate you being here. And thank you I for also, having me. Again, thank you again for your help getting Brew <laughs> through his self imposed incident. It's his fault. I told him that. Wax yeah. paper. Hide the wax yeah, paper. Don't let him do that. <laughs> um, for those who don't know about Affiliated Veterinary Specialists, sure. give kind of a brief overview of what you guys do. Well, Affiliated Veterinary Specialists here in Jacksonville, we are uh, board certified surgeons. Um, we work synergistically with your veterinarians, so like when your guy got in trouble, um, yeah. we were the surgeons to help uh, remove the subway wrapper from him. Um, and so we help out your veterinarian when there are surgeries that are maybe a little bit uh, more technical than what they can, they can handle. And let's talk about your role specifically. What, what, do, what, what do you do? So I'm one of the board certified surgeons. So I'm who your veterinarian calls when there's a more extreme surgery. So, a sub wrapper. Then, yeah, a subway wrapper, for instance. And then, um, you know, at our hospital, we do have our board certified anesthesiologists. And we're the only specialty hospital here in Jacksonville with a board certified anesthesiologist. So uh, our patients are getting the best quality of care um, having them on board. And again, it, it says it in the name specialist, but talk a little bit about the different services you provide for your clients. Us, uh, specifically as surgeons, we supply surgery for orthopedic surgery, for cruciate tears, fractures, things like that, uh, neurosurgery, some back surgery, and then the soft tissue surgeries, like surgeries on the stomach or cancer surgery. So, and we work with the other specialists, the internal medicine, the oncologist, the neurologist, to supply all specialty care. And one of the reasons why you're on today, too, is to bring awareness to something that I really didn't even think about when it comes to my two dogs. And you say it's something that you've been seeing coming a lot through your practice. Yeah, we have recently. And, uh, you know, one of the big things we see is a lot of urinary tract issues. Now, it can be as simple as urinary tract infections that your veterinarian treat. But uh, in some of our patients, they get bladder stones and some very large bladder stones and a lot of bladder stones if you look at the radiograph. And wow. so those stones not only um, affect their ability to urinate, but they can get into the urethra, obstruct the urethra so they can't urinate at all, and then they become a critical case. That's like or, a baseball. Yeah, some of them uh, get pretty big. They, they look like a ravens, since yeah. we were talking about ravens. Ravens <laughs> eggs uh, sitting in the bladder. But um, they're painful, they're uncomfortable, mm. they cause infection, so it's our job and to remove What are them. the symptoms? What should we be recognizing um, with our pets? A lot of dogs, uh, and cats, when they don't feel good, they'll come off of their food, or you'll see that they'll go outside and they'll try and urinate, and they'll want to continue to go back and forth and back and forth. They may drink more water. Um, some owners, you may notice blood in the urine, um, and or they'll they'll urinate inappropriately. You know, like the dog or the cat's never really missed the litter box or urinated mm -hmm. in the house, and then they urinate on the floor, and then you can see the blood in the urine. And so when you have that. You can give them to your veterinarian, and usually they'll run a urinalysis. They may run some blood work. They may take x-rays to see if there's stones like that. And if there are, uh, some of the referring veterinarians will do bladder surgery themselves, or they'll refer them to us. So. All right, so uh, if you find yourself in this unfortunate situation, and you bring them in there, you determine this, what is the treatment for this? Um, it, it really depends. If it's just a bladder infection, then it's antibiotics and, and time. If there are bladder stones like that, then we will go to surgery. We will. Um, open up the bladder and remove those bladder stones. And at the same time, we'll send those stones off to the lab to look for bacteria, as well as what type of stones they are. So what we can do post-operatively is change the diet, and so the diet may prevent them from developing those stones in the future. Uh, what can someone expect if they come in? Now, well, first of all, let me back up for a second. Sure. Um, we, do you have to get a referral from your primary care veterinarian Usually before? Usually we do, yes. Unless, yes. You, okay, unless you know like something's major, like a broken leg or something, then can you come directly? You, you can. We prefer you go through your okay. uh, veterinarian because a lot of veterinarians will do surgery, and so uh, and they're very skilled. So okay. we go have you go through your veterinarian first. And most of the urinary tract diseases that we see, the bladder stones and things like that, they're not an emergency surgery. Now, the different things that are emergency, are stones that get into urethra so they can't urinate at all, and so their bladder will become completely obstructed. Or, uh, especially in male cats, if you have a male cat and you notice them going to the litter box constantly and not producing any urine, you need to get them to your veterinarian right away. Or if it's the weekend, one of the uh, emergency centers, because their bladders can get obstructed, they can go into renal failure, they can mm. get electrolyte abnormalities, and potentially uh, have a bladder rupture from it being obstructed. Well, Let's talk about some prevention of it, because I've seen in the pet store you see urinary, urinary tract food and stuff like right. that. I mean, but is that the only way? Are there things you can do? Are there certain types of? Well, a lot of, of cats that have lower urinary tract disease, we recommend 
using canned food or trying to use like the little water fountain uh, water bowls that they have so it stimulates them to drink more water um, a lot of times owners aren't aware that their dog or cat are predisposed to the urinary issues but once they are your veterinarian can do a urinalysis find out if the stones could be dissolved by just diet or uh, once mm -hmm. we get the stone analysis analyzed we can change their diet to prevent them from occurring. All right. Well, All Dr. Right. McKenzie, thanks for being here. Thank we you for having me. Appreciate your expertise. No, thank you. I'd like to thank Affiliated Veterinary Specialists for sponsoring this segment. For more information, visit avspethospitals.com. You can also call the Jacksonville office at 904-646-1287 or call the Orange Park office at 904-278-0287.